This video is an entry to lay out my thought process of path crossing and contamination risks in times of viruses. When looking at the normal paths that people take in their day-to-day -day lives, it is interesting to see that the path of least resistance is often taken as the most logical path. That's why you would see things that are designed by architects and may look nice and finished, however they are completely retaken by the normal human organic pathfinding. We could refer to this as natural behavior of the people that is subconsciously happening and without them knowing. Normally, when trying to propose a design to a building, the usage of that building is an incredibly important thing to keep in mind. Depending on the needs, certain factors like openness, privacy, light, sound quality, nature, volume, expressiveness, contact points, interaction, obedience and almost every kind of adjective in the books become of more importance. For example, if you propose a building that would operate during the day for young people, like a Waldorf school scenario, the logical conclusion would be to give an extra importance on the factors of light, nature and sound design. In another example, constructing a house for a photographer that needs special lighting situations but is otherwise a very isolating person that loves the city, while light in some of these spaces is important, and the artificial dark rooms as well, Distancing yourself from the outside of the city is a necessary behavior that you want to project in this building. However, with the epidemic going on, those rather normal parameters of a building have to be decreased. For example, the desire of openness, connectivity and contact points, to name a few. And on the other hand, increased factors like volume, interior satisfaction and versatility. With the time today, and taking account of the idea of social distancing, masks and viruses, the result of a building that reacts to those thoughts would be closeness, hygiene and contact reduction. While we are experiencing the effect of the coronavirus today, it is important to note that completely changing the building, style and behavior is an overrushed reaction to this virus. It would be a bad behavior in the long term and it might be useless then. Quick buildings of hospitals that are needed in those cases are useful, but those things will be built today and they are clearly go for maximum efficiency while reducing the human component of it. The question is more about the long term effects because we need to adapt to it because of its increasing danger of viruses in the future. And if we do that, how would that look like? Other viruses are not necessarily as contagious as this one. The time it survives on surfaces may be longer it might be completely airborne and survives a few minutes into the air without any problems. Other viruses like AIDS, HIV are also very contagious because we don't see the effects months in, but in the way it transmits through other people on a different level. However, architecture doesn't really take a part in the role of it. In the current case, however, I would say it does take a role. The question is only how that could be changed. And I think there is an answer to that. If we take in mind that those epidemics come more and more frequent, potentially even more frequent than the building life cycle, thus a proposal for this problem would be useful. The world population continues to increase, thus the space per person decreases, and the chance of affecting each other, also with the idea of more connectivity and travel, is a perfect hotspot for a breeding ground of viruses. Also thinking that an epidemic could be more contagious, more deadlier, with longer incubation periods. This building would give an answer to the inhabitants in this case. If, if a building has a certain efficiency parameter for its use and how long it's used, every time or every day, we see for certain buildings like in a dorm room, sharing flats or elderly homes, they are completely unusable this time, thus the efficiency is reduced more close to zero. However, if there's a possibility that the building is very much usable for isolators and especially usable for people during a pandemic, the building would be really useful from time to time. So while in times of crisis the building is a better place to be in, it would be also compatible in day-to-day -day situations. While only a certain number of us wants to be in that position for only when the time is needed, it could be possible to give people the option to opt out in time of crisis. The building would need to be compatible with every kind of virus, otherwise innovating would be pointless. 
Furthermore, I propose an idea of zones within the building itself. When you have a virus pandemic, containment and hygiene is one of the most important factors for dampening of the virus possibility of further spreads. So there needs to be some kind of zoning system. While you can keep a close distance with your housemates and family, level 0, you should keep a distance to the neighbors and the surroundings, level 1, and complete distancing to the general population, level 3, which would be the outdoors. While this behavior is already shown in existing houses, it is seen that certain elements fail within its own household. You cannot meet with people without contaminating your living areas and then proceed to your normal life without risking a serious breach into your private spaces. Ray Dalio talks from a new world order after this crisis. While this is a terrifying thing to hear and say, it can be that this new reality might be necessary. To help with this not happening again, every part of the life needs to adapt to it and a massive wealth distribution would take place. To make sure that this will not happen again, it might be a norm to have this transformative change happen to every public and private space in the world.